I saw Zone of Interest the other night and yeah, you know, I think, yeah, perfectly decent movie, but it will not really blow your mind. It's a Holocaust movie and Holocaust movies tend to succeed or at least seem remarkable in one way or another because they cover the whole range of human behaviour from the worst, of course, to the best. Bravery, survival, kindness against the odds, sometimes found in the most unlikely places. Anyway, the story, so two thirds of the story follow the family life of a military man and his wife in 1940s Germany. The wife tends to the domestic business and her young family is supported by various domestic servants. And the man, the military man, the soldier, hangs around the house and heads off to work in the building complex next door. Nothing much happens. It is pretty unremarkable. It's domestic life. The only thing that is worthy of note is that the building complex next door is Auschwitz concentration camp and the man of the house is the Commandant Rudolf Hoss. The third part of the film mostly covers Commandant Hoss's business in mundane meetings and mundane business away from the camp as he is moved away into an administrative role to return to the camp later but the last third is really him attending meetings in this standard administrative Nazi setup. During the film, I began to wonder if you remove the context of the man and the location, would the domestic story work on its own? Not really, I concluded. The moments that worked were when there was a connection, albeit slight, to what was going on next door. Like many art house movies, it was slow, which can work, but the film was also very self conscious. The film began with the screen remaining black for perhaps a minute, even though the soundtrack of the countryside seemed to be playing. I thought, in the cinema, that the projector had broken and it was just annoying. Another time the screen went red or orange for a similar amount of time. Again, annoying and self-conscious. The filmmaker, I felt, was inserting himself into the viewing experience. I don't think a story like this, Auschwitz, needs this artful, self-conscious intervention. That was my main gripe. Anyway, back to the film. Not all the characters in the movie were bad. There was a young woman slipping fruit to, to prisoners. And you did see hints of a conscience in some characters. Hedwig's visiting mother, unsettled by the chimneys, belching smoke of the camp next door. I would have hoped for more pace, more contradictions of behaviour being evident, rather than it being assumed by the viewer. A couple of examples. When the commandant's wife's mother visited her daughter, Hedwig, the daughter showed her mother the landscape garden, bordering the wall of the concentration camp. During the conversation, the mother named a particular Jewish woman known to both of them and casually asked the daughter if the Jewish woman is in the camp. I used to clean for her, the mother says. It was a mundane moment of conversation that linked the domestic with what was going on in the building complex on the other side of the garden wall. And it worked. There were of course the gunshots heard in the camp and the smoking chimneys, sometimes with flames spitting out of them and they hit the mark, but to have those personal touches would have enhanced the human story. I would have had a few more examples of those mundane exchanges and even having a few mundane examples of the administrative nature or business of running a concentration camp, running a factory of death rather than running a family home. I visited Auschwitz in the mid-2010s and what was striking about the place was how organised and efficient it was. It was a factory dedicated to killing on an industrial scale. So in summary, it's a perfectly decent movie, an art house movie, but it would only mean something to those who are familiar with the Holocaust. It would be good to have a story, a movie that could stand on its own and introduce new people to the story. Rudolf Hoss, the Commandant, was hanged on the 16th of April 1947, having evaded capture for a year. Having a story about that man before the war, during the war and after the war and his reflections after he was convicted would make an interesting movie. Anyway, that's a short one for now. Like, subscribe and all that rubbish. Until next time.